Ixia, a leader in performance analysis solutions, presents the IX Network video tutorial series. IX Network is Ixia's flagship software application for testing the network infrastructure, including all devices like routers, switches, network access controllers, broadband access, carrier Ethernet, and data center Ethernet. It's used by professionals around the world, including development and system test engineers, network design and support engineers, and even marketing and sales to demonstrate product capabilities and performance. This video tutorial is brought to you by the IX Network product management team. In this IX Network video tutorial, we are going to take a look at testing QoS remarking. A new ingress egress tracking feature introduced in IX Network 540 provides quick and precise validation of remarking QoS values from traffic flows. Chapter 1 introduces the test objective as well as the test setup. Chapter 2 shows how to reserve ports and configure static interfaces that are required to build the traffic endpoints. Chapter 3 shows how to use the traffic wizard to create a traffic configuration, how to add QoS values in particular using IPTOS bits, and also how to enable the ingress-egress tracking view. Chapter 4 goes over the statistics which we will use to verify the DOT's QoS output remarking function. Chapter 1. Test Topology the objective of this test is to validate the policy remapping based on configured service policies on the DOT. Two extra ports are required for this test. Port 1 will be used as a transmit port and port 2 will be used as a receive port. The DOT is configured with a QoS remarking policy. It will take IPTOS value 1 and change it to 7, from 4 to 2, and from 7 to 5 respectively. Port 1 will transmit traffic over IPTOS values 1, 4, and 7, and Port 2 will be used to monitor the remapping performed by the DOT. Chapter 2, Getting Started. Begin by adding the test ports by clicking on the Add Ports button. Select the ports you want to add, and click on the Assign and Add New Ports option. Once the ports are initialized, you can optionally set the port names. In this case, we'll use the port names port 1 and port 2 according to the test topology. Next, create IP endpoints which we will use to build traffic. To do this, in the left-hand menu, select Routing Switching and then select the Protocol Interfaces folder. On this screen, click on the plus IP4 button. Then assign an IP address to the Ixia test port that will be on the same subnet as the DUT's interface. For the gateway, assign the IP address that is configured on the DUT's interface. Once you are done, be sure to select the Enable checkbox. One thing to note is that if a red exclamation mark remains visible under the port link column, then that means the ARP has not been resolved. The most common cause of this is that the IP address configured on the Ixia test port is not on the same subnet as the DOT's interface. Chapter 3, Traffic Wizard. After creating IP traffic endpoints on port 1 and port 2, launch the advanced wizard to begin configuring QoS remarking test. On Traffic Wizard page 1, select the source endpoints on port 1 and then select the destination endpoints on port 2 and click on the Apply button. In this test, we will leave the bidirectional checkbox unchecked because the DOT configuration has a unidirectional remapping policy configured. It is possible to enable the bidirectional checkbox if the DOT configuration has remapping policies configured in both directions. Click on the Next button to proceed to the Packet QoS configuration. On this page, click on the TOS field associated with the endpoint set to bring up the QoS editor. Select the TOS radio button and assign precedent values 1, 4, and 7 according to the test topology.
This setting will configure IX network to transmit traffic from the source endpoint to the destination endpoint using three IP precedence values. The first packet will have an IP precedence value of 1, the next packet will have IP precedence value 4, and the next packet will have IP precedence value 7. Then the next packet after that will again have IP precedence value 1, and so on. Click on the Next button to proceed to the Flow Group Setup page. While it is not mandatory to create flow groups based on any specific packet header field for the purpose of this test, it is common to create flow groups based on QoS values while testing QoS remarking. By selecting this option, all packets with the same QoS value can be rate controlled independently from packets with other QoS values. Click Next button to proceed to the Frame Setup page. You may change the frame size as well as its frame size distribution if there are specific requirements for your test. For the purpose of this test, there is no configuration necessary here, so click on the Next button to proceed to the Rate Setup page. In the test topology, we mentioned that there are two items we want to verify during this test. One is to begin with a low rate test to verify that the DOT is able to QoS remark correctly. Next, we will increase the line rate dynamically on the fly to verify whether the DOT is leaking packets through its QoS remarking engine or not. So, for now, let's start with 1% line rate. And then click Next to proceed to the flow tracking page. The focus of this test is to verify the handling of IP precedence values. Therefore, tracking flows by IPv4 precedence is required. By enabling tracking flows by IPv4 precedence, IX Network will aggregate traffic statistics into three sets, one for all packets with IP precedence value 1, one for all packets with IP precedence value 4, and one for all packets with IP precedence value 7 according to the test topology. In addition, it may also be beneficial to track flows by other packet headers and traffic configuration. These tracking options define the drill down options available when organizing traffic flow statistics. Next, we will configure egress tracking. IX Network's destination egress tracking feature can track traffic flows by many different packet headers. Most common packet header profiles are built in and are available in a drop down menu, including IPv4 precedence. If a specific packet header is not readily available in the drop-down menu, a custom profile is also available so that any packet header can be selected for egress tracking. With the ingress tracking options configured above and the egress tracking options selected below, we have completed the ingress-egress tracking options. The difference between the ingress tracking options and the egress tracking options is that ingress tracking places a signature into the traffic flows before they enter the DUT, so the handling of these traffic flows can be accurately tracked as they are processed by the DUT. Destination egress tracking, on the other hand, only looks at the traffic flows leaving the DUT ports without knowing the content of these packets before they enter the DUT ports. So egress tracking provides a view of the content and distribution of traffic flows at the egress side of the DUT. By combining the ingress tracking and the egress tracking options into a single unified view side by side, QoS remarking can be quickly and precisely validated. This is the powerful ingress egress tracking view feature introduced in IX Network 540. Click on the Next button to proceed to the preview page, and then click on the View Flow Groups button. Based on the configuration we have done, there will be one traffic item created with three flow groups each flow group with a different QoS value. Once these values are confirmed to be correct, click on the Finish button to exit the traffic wizard. After closing the traffic wizard, review the configuration summary. The summary should match the preview page from the traffic wizard one traffic item with three flow groups, 
each flow group with a different IPv4 precedence value as configured. Click on the apply button to write the traffic configuration onto test ports 1 and 2. When apply is complete, click on the start transmit button to begin transmitting these traffic flows. Chapter 4 Statistics Begin with the Traffic Item Statistics view by clicking on the Traffic Items view on the left-hand menu. There should not be sizable traffic loss. If there is sizable traffic loss, then check the configuration before proceeding. Next, right-click on the Traffic Item, find the Ingress-Egress Statistics option, and select IPv4 TOS Presidents. This brings up the egress statistics provided by analyzing the content and distribution of traffic flows leaving the DUT ports as previously explained. With the configuration used, there should be three sets of statistics, one for IP precedence 2, one for IP precedence 5, and one for IP precedence 7. To bring up the ingress traffic statistics to the same view, right-click on the traffic item statistics as shown and select the Drill Down per IPv4 Precedence option. IX Network will not only display the ingress traffic flows before they enter the DUT onto the same page as the egress traffic flows, IX Network will also map the two together so that the remarking behaviors are explicitly shown for each incoming QoS value. From this unified ingress-egress tracking view, we can verify that the DOT is remapping precedence value 1 to 7, 4 to 2, and 7 to 5, respectively. Though the ingress-egress tracking view feature is demonstrated using a test case that focuses on IPTOS field remarking, it is important to note that many other test cases can apply, including VLAN priority, MPLS EXP bits, VLAN service leakage, MPLS tunnel service leakage, fiber channel over Ethernet exchange or sequence misordering. This concludes the IX Network video tutorial for QoS remarking. For more information on IX Network, check out www.ixiacom.com. Thank you for your time and interest from the IX Network product management team.